This is the familiar looking artificial neural network. Let's keep it aside and pull up a 3 qubit quantum neural network for a direct comparison. Just like an artificial neural network, a quantum neural network is an input layer, hidden layers for processing, and an output layer. Let's study each of them in detail. For a quantum input layer, you may have tabular data, image data, or time series data. Using something called data embedding, it converts classical input data into a quantum state. The same data embedding technique can be, for example, binary embedding, amplitude embedding, or angle embedding. In this video, we shall explore angle embedding since we can visualize it on a block screen. For angle embedding demonstration, let's recreate our input layer. These fancy looking quantum gates can be represented by the following simple matrices. You can have RY blocks or RZ blocks in the input layer too. Generally, the same rotation block is used in a layer. However, for the purpose of demonstration, I am using different rotation gates in the same input. Suppose we have an input vector. Let's feed this input vector to our input layer. With initial state at k0, let's pull up a block sphere to visualize the angle embedded. Note how the gate Rx of pi rotates the state vector from k0 to k1. Let's create its copy and keep it aside and reset our state vector. For the gate Ry of minus pi by 2, notice the effect and the plane of movement on the state vector. Now, is the turn for Rz of pi y. However, this gate has no effect on the state vector. Can you guess why? Let's talk about the hidden layers of a quantum neural network. The first component of a hidden layer are the parametrized rotational blocks. Just like input layer, these can be Ry, Rx, or Rz. The parameters of these gates are trainable, and hence these gates are similar to the weights in a classical neural network. The second component of a hidden layer is entanglement block. Entanglement is a key quantum property, something which is difficult to simulate classically, and hence it's used in a quantum neural network. When every qubit is entangled with its successive qubit, it's called the linear entanglement. Now, if I entangle the last qubit with the first qubit, it kind of forms a complete circle, and hence it's termed as circular entanglement. Now, if every qubit is entangled with all of its successive qubits, this type of entanglement is called full entanglement. Rotational blocks with entanglement blocks is termed as a quantum layer. Usually, this layer is repeated multiple times. However, the hidden layers usually end with a rotational block. Note that some researchers refer to as hidden layers only to the rotational blocks and not the entanglement blocks since only rotational blocks are actually trainable. Also, some researchers like to omit out the entanglement blocks in a quantum neural network. The last part of a quantum neural network is output extraction. Just like the quantum input layer converts classical values to a quantum state, a quantum output layer converts a quantum state to some sort of classical value. This classical value can be a probability state vector, measurement width string, or some expectation value, but basically it's some classical value. Now, these obtained classical values go through some sort of pre-processing to obtain y pred, the prediction of the quantum neural network. This pre-processing stage is completely dependent on the problem at hand. As a final step, prediction by the quantum neural network is fed to a suitable loss function. Now, a classical optimizer is used that updates parameters of the rotational blocks when the hidden layers, such that the loss function is minimized. So, I hope by now you have a better understanding of the flow inside a quantum neural network and a better understanding of its various layers. In future videos, we will be talking about kernel trick, higher dimensional spaces, feature maps that form the basis for important concepts like quantum support vector machines and kernel methods. Following which, we will also explore UML metrics like expressibility and entanglement capability. Stay tuned.